Hi everyone, hope you're well. Uh, welcome to lecture 4.1. This lecture is on data transfer. Now, the point of today's lecture, which falls into the software engineering category, is that we want to talk about um, how just conceptually and practically software systems have come together to allow for a common way of communicating between different operating systems, servers, and programming languages, right? Because out there, there's lots of different computers, there's lots of different programs, there's lots of different programming languages, like you're probably familiar with this fact already. And to talk about this, we're gonna talk about standard interfaces generally, JSON specifically, and YAML specifically. So kind of concepts and then two practical examples of this. Um, so let's start at the high level, uh, what is standard interfaces well standard interfaces are things that you probably think about all the time but um, don't realize you're thinking about them right so in any field of engineering we have different systems different um, built by different parties for different purposes and they need ways to interact and connect together so you know you have like Windows or Mac or you know say C or Python or um, you know Firefox and Chrome and like there's all these different things out there so what often happens is that we have these standard kind, standard kind of interfaces or protocols um, and you've actually seen things like this and many, many more out there all the time, you know? So in some cases you have USB, you have USB cables and like USB cables themselves, right? Like, you know, this cable here, it's, these cables are designed to be like a universal standard whereby it doesn't matter if you're getting this from um, you know, this is coming from like a, a Fitbit charger or coming from a phone charger or a, a camera like the one here. There's like a standardized way that people have said this is how two devices communicate. There's protocols, there's procedures for things like bolts, mechanical engineering, there's kind of set sizes or standard sizes, railway tracks around the world, same kind of thing. There's like a standard interface. So different kinds of systems can all work on the same or through the same um, kind of platform. Obviously, in the bottom left, we have this very dramatic picture of the World Wide Web um, URL bar here. And that's because a lot of what we deal with um, when it comes to computers and standard interfaces is done on the Internet, right? Like, I know you might think of USBs and computers, but most of the way you interact with is via the web. Um, as you'll learn in the next lecture, we're going to learn about HTTP and all those different kinds of protocols. Uh, but for now, what we're mainly interested in is specifically how do people transfer data across all these different mediums you know so it's like if you have um you know how is it that a web server that's built in python and built in c and built in javascript how can all these different things still send data so that it's understood by your say google chrome browser um and the way this often works is by use of something we call data interchange formats or data transfer formats or there's a whole bunch of different names for it but it's essentially just like a standard way to transfer data um, through like some kind of common defined interface that can be used by tons and tons of languages so the main ones we're going to talk about are json yaml and xml um, particularly json because you're going to see that more when it comes to your project and other various things so this is probably a little bit conceptual. Let's jump straight into the actual language itself. Um, JSON. JSON, think of it like HTML, Python. It's like a, it's like a specified language. It's a set of language features. Uh, it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. That really doesn't matter. Don't worry about what it stands for. Uh, and formally, JSON is essentially a format made up of braces for dictionaries, square brackets for lists, and it can contain non-numeric and um, numeric items. And in a lot of ways, it's actually very similar to how Python data structures work. So you know in Python that you have these square brackets for lists, you know that you have, um, you know, these braces for dictionaries, you know that you can have strings, you can have non-strings, you can have a few types of non-strings. Uh, but JSON is essentially a, a very straightforward notation that can only describe that small set of things. So for example, here on the left, we actually have what you would call some JSON notation. So you could actually take all of this here if you wanted to, right? And you could store it in say a file. And I could do this right here. I could open a file right now. I could call it um, file.json. And I could paste that in here. And this would now be what we would call a JSON file, which is a file that consists of stuff that is in the JSON notation. 
Now, what you notice about this um, kind of file and format again is that it's very Python-like, right? We have what seems like a dictionary and this seems like a key and this seems like a value, which is a list. And then that list is, contains three dictionaries and those each of those dictionaries contain two keys and their respective values, right? So thankfully you can actually translate a lot of the Python knowledge you have to make sense of this very quickly. The key difference between JSON notation and just Python data structures in general, um, well, two key ones. One is that um, unlike Python, white space is ignored with JSON, so it's like um, the indentation here doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter always in Python, but like, you know, it doesn't matter at all here. This could be one line of code. This could be a hundred lines of code. Um, and the other one is that there are no trailing commas allowed. So something you've probably seen us do a few times with Python is actually put commas on the end of every line like this. Um, that's actually not allowed. That'll actually break the JSON uh, itself. Now, you don't need some fancy schmancy software to play around with this. You could actually just go to Google and type in JSON Explorer. There's tons of websites like this. Um, and they'll let you kind of play around and structure JSON and analyze it. So for instance, here if I put all my JSON here like this, um, and then I click Explore JSON, it'll actually, you know, visualize it for you. And, and here's kind of the point of these data interchange formats. JSON is a really simple notation. Think of it, list, dictionary, strings, non-strings, like that. And therefore what that means is that websites, programming languages, they get this simple notation, and then if they just know how to interpret it, they can package whatever stuff they have up into this, send it, and someone else can capture it, right? Because it's just a string. It's like, you can think of it a hundred different ways. It's like an envelope. It's just, it's a way to package information that is simple and can be understood by everyone. Different computers, different programming languages, everything of the sort. Now, this is cool. So it's like you can, with Python, generate things like this. You can capture and read things like this, but let's actually talk about how you would practically do that. Um, so Python has built-in libraries to handle JSON for you. Um, you don't need to go and write anything. In fact, oh, I don't know if you need to pip install it. I'm just not sure, I'm sorry. But um, we've got two simple files here, which we're gonna pull up in our, um, in our you know, just lecture code. So if uh, we go to our lecture code and we go to four point, oh, I didn't, did I not pull? See, always pull before you work, it's good. Good habit. Um, I've got two JSON files here and let's open them up. All right, let's have a look at them. And you'll see that the first one I hear is called JSONit. JSONit, sorry that my pronunciation of that seems to vary every time words come out of my mouth. Um, but here's a really simple file. We import the JSON library, just like you import sys or math or anything else. Then we've got a Python data structure. This is a Python data structure. Here. If I didn't show you the JSON part, you'd be like, yeah, that looks like a dictionary with a key and lists of values. And now at the bottom, I have a little bit of like file opening stuff. Now, I don't think we've done much, much file opening stuff in Python. So let me just kind of quickly show you that one way that you can open and write to files in Python is, you know, you can say with open um, myfile.txt, I want to write to it. That's what the W means as file. And then you can say um, file.write hello or something like this, right? And this should, this should create a file for you. If you go Python 3, JSON it, you should get a file here. That file should have the stuff in it. Um, so it's very straightforward in Python. Open, what open does is open goes and tries to open a particular file on your operating system's file system. It tries to open it with a certain permission. In this case, this is the right permission. Sometimes you only need to read it. Um, and then what it does is what this function returns is basically like a file pointer or what we call a file descriptor, which is really just like a, a token for like, this is the file, like, you know, the file path or something. Think of, it's just an abstract sense of a, a pointer to a file. And then what we do is we grab that and we say, well, for that particular file you're pointing to, I'd like to write to it. There you go. That's how we write plain text. 
But let's say we want to actually take our data structure here and we want to write it to a JSON object. Well, uh, a couple of things here. One is we could actually convert it to JSON straight away with the JSON library by doing this. JSON.dump to a string. And when you do JSON.dump to a string, what you're actually doing here is you are saying that you want to take this data structure in Python and you would like to convert it to a JSON string. And then you want to print that out because this will just return you a string. So if I run this again, we get this. Now what's, what's really important again to contrast is that this here is a string. This is an actual string, ASCII characters, whereas this here is just your Python data structure running in Python. So what I mean by that is that other languages, other systems, if they saw this in a Python file, they'd be like, okay, different language, I don't know what you mean. Whereas this is now just a piece of ASCII that you could package up in a file, that you could send over the internet, that you could put onto like a USB, that you could uh, put in a database or something. Like you do anything with it because it's a standard, simple notation that everyone knows how to read, like a universal language. Except we don't just want to print it to the terminal, we actually want to write it to a file. So I'm going to open a file here. I'm going to call it, one sec. I'm going to call it export.json because it's going to have JSON in it. So I might as well give it a JSON file extension. I want to write to that file and same thing we saw before. And now what we can do is we can say json.dump. So what we did before is we used dump s, which means dump as a string, but just the json.dump by itself means take the data structure and dump it into a file given by a file pointer. So just to, just to remember again, it's like json.dumps will take a data structure and just return it as a string. This will take a data structure, will take something, it doesn't have to be, I guess it's always a data structure technically. Anyway, this will take a data structure and it'll output it to a file. Um, the, both of these two are fairly commonly used. It depends what you're trying to do. So in this case, it'll output it to a file. So if I look at my file system here, nothing's there. Python 3, JSON it, ls again. Now I have a file. I can cat export.json. Great. So now in this file is just that JSON. Super duper duper easy. Now on the flip side of it, what happens if you want to get a JSON string and decode it? Well, again, just before I dive fully into this example, let's play around with it um, ourselves. So as I said before, JSON is just a string. So I could call, I could create, I could create my own JSON string called stuff and it could be, um, you know, a dictionary, uh, or maybe I'll make that a single quotes. It could be a dictionary with a key like name, um, which is, or, you know, ages, which is just a list of one, two, three, four, five. Right, so this is just a string. What I can do with Python again after I've imported the JSON library is I can say print, or yeah, I can say um, print, uh, well, yeah, json.load s. Similarly, like dump means to dump. Like, you know, if you think about dumping garbage, you're like putting it out, right? You're like putting it over there. Load is to like pull in. So I want to pull in the JSON and turn it. Um, from a string into something useful. So I give it that stuff and you'll see what I get is that, I print that out. Now, here's the interesting thing. That is a Python data structure that has been printed. This is a string, that's all that is. And I can print them both out. And even though they print out to the same thing, they are very different things in reality, right? Because as I said, one of them is actually you know, the top one here is just a string. It's quite, it's a literal string. The second one is my data structure that I have just happened to print as a string. And in fact, I could capture it like that. I could say my data structure is equal to json.loads and then I could modify it. I could say well, dsages.append6. And then I could print the data structure. So you see, it's, a, it's actually like a real thing in Python. Um, but what's cool about this again is that I've managed to interpret it from this fairly straightforward notation that JSON provides. So the real question is if I've got my export.json file, right, which we saw before, how do I take this and load it into my program? Well, again, we do kind of the opposite of what we did before, which is we open a file, we open export.json. This time we're interested in reading it though. And after we um, open it up to read it, 
we then you do json.load where we give it a file descriptor in this case again. So this will actually op this will actually take that file descriptor or pointer um, and it will load it into that variable for us and then when I run it, Python 3 unjson it, I didn't save it, it actually prints this out for me and again this is a real live working data structure. Um, so that's super cool, like that's JSON in a nutshell. Um, it's a super, super common way to transfer or store data because, again, the notation is re relatively simple. It can't store everything. It can't store date times, right? Like, it's pretty much only strings, numerics, list dictionaries, that's it. So I'll give you an example here. Watch what happens if I try and say store a date and I store like a date time dot date time dot now. Um, and I import date time. You'll see here that if I print out my data structure, right, that um, it actually shows me, it prints out, okay, the names key, then all the names, and then the last dictionary's date with this date time here. Great. So it actually, like, this was a valid data structure that we printed, but when we went to try and export it to JSON, it said object of type type. JSON <laughs> object of type object of type date time is not JSON serializable. It that's just a way of saying it does not know how to take a date time object and convert it into a a dictionary slash list slash string slash numeric. It just doesn't know how to do that. It's not possible to do. You could obviously try and format it to something. For instance, if you know, because this isn't working at the moment, you could obviously try and say, I'm going to format that to just the year or something. You know, if you play around with the date time object, but you know, that's that's you converting it to a string essentially, right? You're not actually storing a date time there, you're storing a string. So that's JSON in a nutshell. Um, JSON is primarily used as a simple notation for data transfer and simple data storage. YAML is a similar yet slightly different um, markup language or notation that is used for a similar purpose, but YAML is used less as a data interchange format to send data you know, between things. And it's used more as a simple notation to um, kind of write configuration files. The high level difference between like JSON and YAML is honestly just how it displays or, or like the syntax rules around its notation because both of them are dictionaries, lists, strings, non, you know, numerics like that, both really simple. So the kind of the limitations of what you can do with them are pretty much the same. Um, it's just that YAML uh, avoids all of the square braces and square brackets and braces and quotes and all this stuff, which can which can give uh, kind of JSON a bit like a, like a claustrophobic or a really verbose feeling. Um, so in, in some ways it's, it's kind of weirdly like Python. Um, the difference between JSON and YAML is that in YAML indentation does matter. Um, we use indentation for, uh, you know, talking about that we use indentation for kind of lists to begin a list. Uh, and you can actually see the differences here. To be honest with you, I think YAML is one of those things where you look at it and you're kind of like, how does this work? And then you look at it a few more times and you're like, oh, okay. But if I pull up like a simple JSON to YAML converter here, you will kind of... I can go the other way, right? I'm pretty sure I can go the other way. JSON to YAML. I assume they would have this, thank you. Um, yeah, so, you know, you have something like this, convert it, and you can see how it turns out over here. Um, oh, they've done it like that. That's interesting. So, you know, most, uh, a lot of, a lot of JSON objects tend to start with a brace or some kind of dictionary. So in this case, you can see I've got one key location, so then I've got a list. So each of these list items is indented, and the beginning of each of these list items has a dash out the front. Now, typically what you do with YAML is that you put a dash out the front of the first item in the list and then the rest of the items just don't have a dash. And that's actually how you can distinguish kind of what the list of um, 
kind of dictionary items is because again you look at this and you might you might be quick to be like oh well that just looks like six items but it's like it's not really just six items you can actually tell it's three items because every time there's a dash you're saying there's a new list item uh, and that's kind of why you see this example here is is written like this um, so it's it's much more compact right now obviously you could make this more compact by you know doing this or something but you know then it just looks a bit ugly and weird so YAML super concise again YAML is used um, on your project backend for instance so if you go to GitLab CI which we talked about in another lecture this is actually all in YAML that's why it has a YML file extension this is a key here and this is a value this is a key that contains a value that's a list and this is one item in the list so if I was to try and convert this, I mean, let's do this together, right? Let's try and convert this to YAML just conceptually. It's like, all right, so I convert this to JSON. It's like, okay, well, first thing I'd have an image key which maps to a um, value and then I'd have a stages key, which, oh, because there's indentation and a dash, I can tell it's a list, okay? And then in the list is actually just a value. How does it know whether it's a value or a dictionary? Well, if it was a dictionary, there'd be a colon after, right? Um, and then I've got my PyTest key, which in this case looks like it also it maps to a dictionary because there's no dash. I might get this wrong. We'll find out. Uh, and, you know, so we got a stage key, which just has checks value. And then we've got a script key, which because of the indentation and the dash, you now know it's a list that contains just one item, which is Pi test. Anyway, let's try and convert this one to YAML to JSON. Let's go back to our friend. See if we get this right. Oh, okay. That looks. That look okay. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. I suck at this stuff. Honestly, I I I don't I don't write much yeah yeah <coughs> I don't write much YAML myself. So. Uh, it's 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 a little bit weird, right? Like at first, but you play around with it a few times, and you're like, oh, okay, this kind of makes sense. But it's much more compact. Same kind of gist as JSON. Um, the reason I mentioned that YAML tends not to be used as a data interchange format is probably predominantly because white space matters with YAML. So that's kind of the advantage of JSON is you can kind of serialize it and package it up into a just like a flat string, whereas YAML you'd have to actually save it like this and send the whole file. Um, so that's why, again, in, in my experience, you'll tend to see things like JSON used for big dumps of data, and you'll see tend to see things like YAML used more for um, uh, configuration files and, and various other things. Because um, it's just like, particularly things that need to be read, because YAML is a lot more readable, whereas JSON is more compact. That's, that's probably at the core of the trade-off. Now, another type of uh, standard interface that you might have seen or heard of is XML. Um, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. This is very old. This is kind of like the predecessor to JSON and this was in a lot of ways how information was transferred or stored in a standard way before JSON um, and it's kind of written like HTML and you'll actually see that it's remarkably similar in the sense that you know you, you kind of can treat these like dictionary items and then um, I don't think there was a good sense of a list so much but um, I don't need to talk to this it's just like this was how you would maybe store information in the past uh, so you know if someone said hey can you I'm working on a C program on Linux um, and you're working on a Python program on Windows can you send me all your data sure you could send it in a CSV or something but um, this might be a more dynamic way you know a, a less structured way of sending it just like JSON and stuff the, the thing with XML that makes it pretty much unused these days is that it's definitely more verbose because of all the open tags, closed tags, and the side brackets. It's harder to read. Um, it also takes up a lot more space, you know, because it's got, it's got to have, like, most of the text here is not information, it's structure. So for large data sets, it actually has a huge sense of redundant information storage. Um, and therefore it's more demanding to process as well. So in summary, XML, you'll see it around. Now you know what it is. YAML, JSON, two really important interfaces, really simple notation. JSON tend to be used for data transfer and things you don't need to read. 
you know, very large things as well or small, but generally just data transfer. YAMLs use more for kind of configuration files that any kind of system can understand because you could still have YAML parsers to understand YAML. Anyway, that's it. Please pause the video, leave your feedback, always appreciate it and um, have a great whatever you're up to next. So hope you're all well and happy and all of that.